Mm, okay. So that should be good. We are live. Hooray! <laughs> so um, you've been getting a lot of flack from some of the other apprentices about being my favorite. Um, I have. Which, which isn't necessarily true. It's also not untrue. Because um, you've just been going above and beyond as far as like everything from making videos for how it works to um, instructions and all kinds of documents and our maps. So you've just been really like excelling, which I'm super grateful for. Why, oh, thank you. Are you ready? Yep. Let's see if you can stay in my good graces now. No pressure. <laughs> Okay, All so right. uh, you're going to go up and you're going to click on the screen share, and then uh, Should be... we'll start there. There we go. Okay. All right, so tell me, tell me about your image selections. All right, so this is actually an image I took in, like, 2007. Um, it's from a small town in England somewhere. I don't remember the town. Um, it was when I was kind of getting back into photography a little bit more. Um, and so I decided to take a bunch of pictures of doors um, and such there because there were big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this one caught me because it was blue and it was very, very short. And then I liked the, the window to the left that had been uh, kind of bricked off. And then you could see the window above um, with just like the flowers peeking out. So I thought it was kind of a nice uh, variation of kind of like three different elements there. Um. So yeah, that's that why I got this one. So why do you love it, and what do you think needs uh needs work in it? I love it because it's a time when I was traveling about. Uh, haven't got to do that in some time, at least internationally. Um, and so it's it's kind of something that I want to do more. I want to be able to get to more of those interesting places that have kind of little quirks about them. Um. California, there's not as much like quirky, weird old buildings like that. There's some here and there, but um, not as common, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I think the processing, it's a... I think I did cross-processing on it at some point. Um, I haven't really touched it in a long time. So there's a little like drain pipe in the upper left-hand corner that I'm noticing now that I you know, might just wash out or uh, clone out. But other than that, I kind of like it. Um, not a whole lot that bugs me because it's it's kind of supposed to have that kind of gritty, kind of realistic, old feeling to it. So. And where was this taken? Uh, some small town in England somewhere. Okay. Um. So this is uh this is going to be a little bit of a a stretch. Um, for me too, because usually I'm grading portraits. Um, and you had actually put a lot of landscape and um cityscape kind of work in your profile, but I uh, I didn't necessarily pick you for your photos as much as for what you wrote, because I thought that you would be a really good fit, and I was totally right. Um, but I do, I do like this image. For me, it's a little... It's pretty, but it's just pretty. There isn't anything necessarily that's like really jumping out and grabbing me as, ah, oh, this is a fantastic image. And uh, like our our fearless uh, headmaster Trey, like some of his images, and I'm not like a landscape cityscape kind of girl. I'm definitely a portrait person. Yeah. Um, but I can just stare at some of his pieces all day. So yeah. even though I don't teach and I can't necessarily jump in on on this kind of work, particularly as an area of expertise, I still look for it to move me. Yeah. Um, I do like the composition. I think it's very rare that I usually see images that the building takes up the entire frame. Usually a lot of people are including you know, the sky and other things that are around. So I actually like the fact that this is completely filling out um, the whole frame of the image. You lost just a little bit because it's so busy with the texture. So I like the bricks in the in the lower window, but I just think that it's a lot of of empty space and it's very geometrical. I think it almost works as more of like a sort of an abstract photography, which is I was going to say abstract or a postcard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I think is like a wish you were here kind of postcard. But I think. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to check with a couple of the other um, the other masters that specialize in this to give you some more feedback because I don't know what it's missing. I just feel like it didn't quite quite get there. So I'm yeah. gonna give you two. I think it's commendable, but I don't think it's it's thrilling just yet. Yeah, understandable. So. All right, on to the next one. All right, I had to throw a portrait in there to make you happy and be like, I have something to critique. Um, <laughs> and I kind of want to get more into it. So this is, what would be three years ago now? Uh, it's my girlfriend, and this was her graduation from college. And so I ended up being the paparazzi guy and just snapping, you know, like 500 pictures during her couple-hour party. Um, and this is one of the ones that I thought worked best or came out best. Um, I don't like to do a lot of... Posing, I guess, or posed pictures um, so far. I just like doing more like the candid shots, um, as you were. So I like this one because I had, there was, she had some orchids that were gifted to her, and so those are in the front kind of framing her face um, and kind of giving some depth to the image, I thought. Um, I do wish that maybe I was able to get up a little higher, or like she'd been up a little higher, she could see a little bit more of her neck. Um, mm -hmm. And a little bit more of the dress, because that kind of gets lost. Um, and then she has like the nice white pearl necklace that pops, but you lose a little bit of it. Um, I think uh, that's a I think that's a really good assessment. Um, I don't. I'm always a big fan of um, the foreground and the background, and I like the the shallow depth of field because it really does make you focus on solely her. But I do think she's just a little bit lost. In the uh, in the image, um, the orchids in the front they have like that clip and that blue thing. That's a little bit distracting just because the color pounces a little yeah. bit hard. Um, and I probably would have uh, cloned out the line that's kind of coming out the side of her head just because it kind of severs yeah. a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's beautifully exposed. I'm guessing you were just shooting natural light and kind of photojournalist. Yep. Um, attacking it. Uh, the hair that comes down and crosses over her lip, that one I would have edited out. The other ones that are still kind of making it so that it's the back of her hair, they don't bother me as much. But just that one I would have cut out because it's just, again, it's just kind of severing down the side of her face. Yeah, um, like she's eating I, her hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can think of because I know that feeling and that's all I want to do is like rub my hair out of my face right now. Um <laughs> I love the expression. There's definitely there's definitely genuine emotion in it. Um, I would have liked to have seen her maybe looking up a little bit towards the camera, seeing like just a little bit of a different angle. You didn't quite get it here. Yeah. Um, so I think it um, I think it shows promise, but it wouldn't be one that I would put in your portfolio. I do think it's more of just, you know, a snapshot from a very affectionate boyfriend and not necessarily an accomplished photographer. Yeah. Cool. On to the next. All right, so this is uh, Sacramento State. It's one of the 26 CSU campuses in California. It's where I went to school, um, and it's also where I work now. This mm -hmm. is actually the library. Um, so being on one campus for so long, you learn a lot about the buildings. You learn about, a lot about kind of the architecture. Um, so in like the late 60s, 70s, and early 80s, there was a style of architecture called brutalism. Uh, basically, was there to more or less beat down the any 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 emotion that college students would have to like rebel against the government. That's <laughs> apparently, I guess, what it's what it was kind of purpose was. Um, so this is actually the back side of the library. The story goes that these windows were actually supposed to be on the other side of the building that outlooks like a giant kind of courtyard area. Um, but somehow the plans got switched around. So this is actually the back side of campus, and these windows don't really look at anything. And the nice. entire front side of the library is just solid concrete all the way across. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, yeah, really, really, really cool. So I took this actually during, I think it was finals week one semester. Um, I'd finished up already, so I was just kind of meandering around ca campus, and um, I just liked the leading lines going from the walkway going to the kind of the dark hallway, um, and the, the fact that you could kind of see into the library a little bit with all the lights that are inside, and then the vertical lines um, just kind of 
lots of geometric shapes, I guess, just kind of like leading you different places. Yeah. Um, and then the sky that night was it just rain, so there was some, still some clouds like passing through. Um, I should probably have gone back and re-edited the sky a little bit because it's totally blown out in the upper left. Um, and then it's just ever, ever so slightly um, out of kind of alignment. It's slightly mm -hmm. not perfect in se uh, symmetry. The light on the left-hand side's closer to the edge of frame than the light on the right-hand side in the very front. Um, and that was something I actually noticed just earlier. So now I, it's bugging me. <laughs> actually, I really like this one. The lights don't necessarily bother me, but I think that there is so much symmetry going on that it starts to feel weighted to the right because of the change in the um, the cement colors. Yeah. Um, you know, which is obviously not something with the photo. It's how it was. But I think if I think if I had done it, I might have actually matched it to the other side just so that it wasn't that yeah so off kilter um but this one I love this is what I was this is what your your first one needs that I couldn't couldn't find the words to put into uh, um the critique but I love the clouds the clouds almost look like they were composited in and even the clouds seem to be sucking into the center and the the center of the uh, the image where the doors are. So I I totally agree with you. I love all the leading lines. I love the symmetry of it. It's very geometric, and it's just it's got this weight in the center with the doors because it's so dark that you just feel like it's kind of sucking everything right into it. So that's exactly where you go. You can almost pull into it. It's almost got like a like the the benefit of the the fisheye lens and why we love that perspective, but without the perspective, distortion is very unique. I really like this one. I'm going to give you a three. I think it's exemplary for where you are right now. Hooray! Yay! Um, all right, next one, then. This is, again, kind of a, a geometric one. Um, this is actually one of the ones I submitted for level three, um, and I got some feedback saying that the back of the shop, to give us a little bit more depth, should have been a little bit uh, burned or darker, so I went back and did that. I didn't want to do it too much because I didn't want to lose the detail of the hats at the very back. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could maybe go in and make it even a little bit darker still. Um, and I burned the the light right at center at top a little bit. Um, but then I brightened up the posters that were on either side of the entryway, and I also brightened up kind of the white little entryway itself to try and give a little bit more depth to the image. Um, but this is at Gorn Brothers Hat Shop in San Francisco. Um, I was there meandering about one night and uh, didn't have my tripod, but I really like the storefront here, so I put my camera up on one of the like newspaper stands and held it as still as possible and got a couple uh, longer exposures that I think gave some good detail inside and gave some good detail of kind of the street leading into it. So. I really love this one. Um, I don't necessarily agree. I like that you can see all the detail all the way into the shop, so I don't know that I would darken it down too much more, especially if that comes at the expense of losing all the little pieces in. Um, but I love the way that the front is lit with um, with all the little oversized Christmas lights and how that yeah. glow kind of comes out. It has this very magic, like, Diagon Alley kind of feel to it where there's just something very very interesting. I could totally see this shop wanting this as like one of their promo or commercial photos totally. Um, I really like it. The only thing that I think pulls me away, and again this doesn't really have anything to do with you, it's just the shot, the reflection of the main light in the center that shows up on the the right yeah. side, that one grabs my eye and pulls me out of the symmetry again, just because mm -hmm. it's not also on the right. So I may have, I may have like played with that and cloned it, but that's being really, really nitpicky. Um, overall, I just I think this one's an exceptional shot too. I'm going to give you a exemplary for this one as well. Awesome. All right, on to the last one then. Uh, this is at uh, McMenamin's. Um, it's a place up in Oregon. It's a company that buys old properties, so old schools. This used to be like a co-op type farm place. 
Um, and they turn them into hotels and kind of resorts. This is like their biggest kind of home base place. And this is their uh, wine cellar slash tasting room. So off to the left-hand side, you can see through those little glass windows some fermenting takes, basically. Mm-hmm. So this room all the way down to the left, um, it went pretty far. There was all those tanks. And then on the other side, they had this kind of just really cozy, really dimly lit room um, that you could just sit and taste wine and everything. And uh, This is another one that I submitted for level three. Um, and some of the comments were that, again, it was a, it was cool that you saw so much in there, but there wasn't as much depth because everything was more or less the same kind of exposure value. So I went back and I, I brightened up some areas, specifically the rug kind of in the front to try and draw your eye to the floor and kind of up and up and through. Um, and then I cloned out an exit sign that was uh, in the upper right-hand corner because that just kind of drew your eye to that and kind of lost the focus on the other things. Um, so I like this one a lot. Um, it's, I think, one of my more well-edited like edited and kind of post-processing images that I've done. Um, I know it was just a fun kind of like cozy area to, to shoot in. So. I, uh, I like this one. You have a... You have a very interesting knack that I'm starting to see. And, I mean, this one's a really lovely, interesting location as well. But there's something about the way that you're shooting and exposing or you're editing. I'd be interested to see a couple of these, like, brawl just out of camera. Um, just to see what they look like before. <laughs> Um, just to, just to see, like, you know, obviously, like, you don't have to do them for critique, but between you and I, I'd be very interested to see, like, but whatever, whatever it is that you're doing to get to the end result has this very sort of magical, mysterious kind of feel to them that, um, that I'm really digging in your work. Um, I, again, I don't mind the, I don't mind that everything's exposed because you're picking places that you want to look at everything in the room. You know, if the back wall was just a blank, empty drywall and didn't have all of that, then I could see, you know, paying attention to the depth of the room a little bit more, but this, this doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't feel like that's really lacking. Um... It's so bright on the left side though, because that's where all the light is. That I do feel like again, you kind of, you're just kind of feeling like the scales aren't quite balanced, and it's pulling you to one side of the frame a little bit. Yeah. Um, so something, something to think of. I know, I know. Any time that I'm in certain locations, that'll really bother me, even if I'm shooting people. So I tend to move lamps and things, which um, you may not be able to do, but. Um, I would just kind of pay attention to that when you're shooting and see what you can do about um, different angles. But overall, I really like this one. Um, I don't think it's quite as strong as the other one, but it's almost there. And I'm not going to give you too many exemplaries because that's just going <laughs> to create the problem of you being the favorite. But this one's really beautiful, too. I'm definitely going to give you at least a commendable on it, so two points. Cool. Good stuff. Awesome. Is that it? Are we through all five? That's five, isn't it? That was all five. All right, good stuff. Okay, so um, so obviously you're favoring the landscape. So let's talk a little bit about what you're doing and where you're at and what you want to do. Um, so with landscapes and such, it's pretty much weekend time right now. It's kind of whenever I can go out and get a chance to go shooting. Um, it's been really, really hot and really, really dry here lately, so it's not like really inspiring weather to go out and get some landscapes because you got to lug your tripod and you got to lug the camera and everything and you go, then you get there and you're just drenched in sweat so it's not like really appealing um, but I know I should just get out and shoot anyway um, I live right next to the state capitol and it's a really great place to go shoot but living right next to the state capitol for like two and a half years you feel or you get to the point where you're like okay I've kind of shot everything that I, I want to get there yeah. and it's just, I've had like some car issues and not enough money to fix it, so I'm like, hmm, I don't really want to drive a long ways and then break down out in the middle of nowhere. And <laughs> okay. So, so uh, yeah. you're you're going to school right now, right? Are you going for? No, I'm I'm done. You're done. So I I, I work at the college though. Um, so I work in their continuing ed department. I develop online courses, but. 
Did we lose Excuse you? Yeah. There we go. Okay, we go. you're back. Okay. So, um, so you're done school. Now what? Working, getting a, a, a steady paycheck and, and health benefits is kind of my <laughs> my focus for now. Um, and that's nice, but trying to figure out if that's something I want to do forever or kind of stick with that path. I like photography a lot. I don't know if it's what I want to replace my sole income, though. Okay. I, I, get to, I feel like if I, if I stick kind of with what I'm doing now, I'll have something that gives me a steady paycheck, and I won't have to, to worry about making photography work for me all the time, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And I, I, I feel like it would kind of soil or, like, dirty up what I want to do. Because I like doing photography mostly for myself, and if other people like the images, that's awesome. But it, it's something I kind of do for my own enjoyment, and I haven't found something that, to me is profitable so far, um, just photography-wise, that I think could kind of sustain me. And so it's it's nice to kind of have that fallback and not have to worry about other stuff. So is your concern in not doing photography full-time that you don't feel that you can make enough income at it to enjoy it, that it would be a stress, or is it that you just like doing photography and you don't want it to be something you have to do? I think that's kind of thing, is I don't I don't want it to be something that I have to do. I don't okay. necessarily like to be forced, like, you have to shoot this wedding and you have to do this. It's To me, it's I'd much rather want to do it than have to do it. Okay. So. Um well, then, in that case, then we don't have to talk about business necessarily if that's not where you're looking to go. And I think it's really awesome. I'm actually really excited for people to hear you say that because I think in the last couple of years, like, there's been this, like, stigma around it that you're not um, a good photographer if you're not a professional photographer. If you're not earning money at it, then, you know, then you're just playing and you're a hobbyist, which isn't necessarily the case. So I love that you're doing it for art's sake. Um, I think that a lot of people want to be able to do it full time because they enjoy it and they don't like their jobs. So if you're feeling good and comfortable where you are and in the job that you have and the benefits that you have and all of that, that it, you know, takes care of you financially and gives you time to go do this, then I would say just stick with that, you know. And the nice thing is is that you can always change your mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, that said, though, you know, you're putting all this time and energy into creating it. So if not for financial gain, for what? Just just for you, just for something to do? Is it cathartic? Do you want to do gallery shows? What's the... It is pretty cathartic. Um, I go to coffee shops quite frequently. I actually, like, made... I had to drive home to the airport at, like, 5 this morning, came home, took a nap, woke up so I could go get coffee before I came back for this. And uh, one of the shops, the uh, manager, she wants me to kind of do a show in December um, at one of their stores. So I am curious, like... How does one go about doing that? How do you kind of market yourself there? What reasonable prices are for prints and all that kind of thing? Because, I mean, obviously, yeah, I like doing it for myself, but if I can make money off of it, why not? So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It can always be a side thing, too. Like, it can always just be something that you occasionally make money at, not necessarily that's, like, the lifeblood of your finances. Um, as far as pricing goes, um, it does vary a little bit by demographic, so I would actually look, if you're at this coffee shop, does she have work hanging on the walls constantly? Is it one of those places that there's just always artist stuff up? Pretty much. It rotates usually about once a month. So, so are there price lists or like little price tags next to them? They're usually priced. Okay, so yeah. I would just go and check it out and see what other people that have their stuff currently hanging on have them at and, you know, kind of correspond that with sizes. Um, pricing is something that gives people a really hard time. So there's yeah. basically two ways that you can do it. Either you just price for the profit of the product um, that makes it worth your time investment and, you know, obviously the print costs and whatever you're doing, you know, a you know, poster frame from Target and a print done, 
you know, at a smaller lab is totally different than if you spend the money to have a metallic, you know, yeah. enormous wall print or you drop a couple hundred dollars on the frame too. So yeah. um, I would say that at the very least, um, time aside in the investment for you to make it, especially if you're working with images that you've already created, it should be four times what the cost is for you. So if when the printing and the matting and the framing is done, it costs you $100, then you should mark it up to at least four. Okay. You know, nice, easy, covers 300% profit on everything, makes it good to part with, you know, and then usually for me that compensates for whatever the time that I'm putting in. But especially, like, for you, if you're shooting just because you love it and you're creating these things anyway, and honestly, at this point, this is really unpopular. I'm going to get I'm gonna get blamed for this later. But um, if you already created these and they're essentially just sitting in your hard drive right now, like, it's essentially all profit. Like you don't get that time back. It's already spent, whether you make money or not on it. So yeah. at that point, I feel like everything about it is profit. And there's such a a heavy um, emphasis on charging what you're worth, and you know, increasing the value of the industry and blah blah. blah. And I I just don't care about it. Like the first session that I did, I did for seventy five dollars. It was very very expensive and high end, you know. And I did everything about that wrong and I did everything that pisses off all of the professional photographers and I did everything that made me one of those people that they went, well, she'll never make it. Oh, so you did um, spot coloring. Oh, yeah, spot coloring <laughs> and, and really, really bad, like, photo overlay texture thingies and, um, you know, I didn't know that you needed the trigger to fire the strobe, so they're all hardly underexposed and soft, and the focus isn't good, and they're noisy, and they're just, they're wretched images. I'm really excited to post some of them in the group. Um, you know, and I remember getting paid $75, and now, like, all my friends will look at it and be like, see, that's everything that's wrong is new people come in and they think they can charge that. But I remember at the time that I spent three hours and I did her hair and makeup, and we shot, and I gave her a disc of the images, quickly edited with some sort of program that was on my Windows thing, like, you know, about, like, half a step up from iPhoto kind of thing. Yeah. And I remember when she left, breaking that down and going, three hours, $75, I made $25 an hour, which is more than either of my parents have ever made in their lives yeah. at jobs that they hate. So... I still felt like, I still look at that and feel like I was doing okay, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of photographers um, that are trying to go pro that are getting so caught up in the idea of, I have to charge what I'm worth and I have to, you know, expand upon what the acceptable standard is in the industry. And because they can't make that work, they're staying in jobs that they hate for $15 an hour because they're trying to charge what they're worth as a photographer and they don't actually know what that means. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. So really, as long as you're being smart about the numbers and looking at it and going, okay, well, it's going to cost me $100 per print to put it on the wall and I'm going to do 10 of them, so that's $1,000, you know, then you can look at that and break it down into what's the most... Um, easy way for me to do it because if you charge two hundred dollars, you made a hundred percent profit off of it, you know, and you only have to sell five of them in order to make your money back, you know. Yeah. But the other thing too is is that whatever doesn't sell, it's you know, acting as a marketing material and putting your name out to everybody in that local area, and then when they do come down off the walls, you can always look at different online venues for selling, or you can offer them at a discounted rate, um, you know all your social mediums, Google+, Plus. you can also look into image licensing and stock photography and put them up because I could totally see those on a variety of different websites and blogs and materials for everything from home decor to, to traveling blogs. Yeah. So, um, so that's where I would go with it. And then as far as, like, fictitious name or my name, because there's a unfortunately popular female comedian that has my name, so. That's okay. There is a porn star that had one of my names. I've actually had a couple between uh, parents and <laughs> changing things, but yeah. And there, uh, there was a poet that had my name too. So the first year that I was on Google, I was like on page five. I could not get up. Now I freaking own her, and I own the first two pages. So, um, and I've never heard of her, so she's not that good. Okay. Okay. Until she watches this, in which case I love you. 
Uh, she was on Drunk History recently, apparently. One of my friends were like, I was watching Drunk History, and guess who was on it? You! And I was like, no, that's that's not me. Um, so you would say, as opposed to doing like a fictitious name, if you're going to do any sort of business, just use your own name, or... When I started, I worked with a fictitious name, and I had so much fun sitting and figuring out what my name was going to be. Yeah. Um, but I think that especially if you're not necessarily catering to service-related, like where you're doing portrait sessions and stuff like that, you're creating art. So what do artists do? They sign their work. So, um, you know, if you have, like, you know awesome aperture photography, you know, are you going to sign that at the bottom of your prints? Because once you sign something, it's art. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't want, and no matter how big you get, let's say that you get as big as, you know, as Trey is in the world, and he has his Stucking Customs website, but it's Trey Radcliffe. Yeah. Stucking Customs. Like, that's almost secondary to him. And there are plenty of people that know who he is but don't know what the name of his blog or his business is. Yeah. Um, the other thing is is that if it's your name, you can attach it to as many little offsets as you want, and you have your hand in all of them. Like, Trey's got, like, five or six different irons in the fire with different businesses and stuff, but everybody yeah. knows who he is. So do you want to build a brand that the brand can be known for, or do you want to be an artist that your name is known? Because even some of the best brands and the most expensive brands, like in any kind of genre, from restaurants to to department stores, you know, Tiffany's, who owns it, who started it, you know, Victoria's Secret, you know, and it's not Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, you know, there's there's just all these things, like, we look at all these brands, but we don't actually know who was behind them. So that legacy gets passed down, but it's the kind of thing that if you build this amazing brand and it blows up, but it's not your name, then people will know the brand's not you. And yeah. I knew another photographer that um, his, uh, his studio was very well known. And he picked a name because he didn't like his name because his name was Dwayne. And he's he just hated his name. And he's like, it doesn't sound like an artist's name. It sounds like a guy that gets beat up for lunch money. And um, so he was very well known. And he would go in and go to parties. And he would spend all night talking to people. And nobody had any idea that he was associated with this studio. Uh, one of my other friends, Craig Lemire, um, he owns Moz Studios, and he loves it, and he has his freaking brand on everything. He even tattooed it on his arm. Like, that's his brand and what he built. But the funny thing was was that somebody actually went up to him, recognized the logo, and asked him if he worked with Moz Studios. And it's his. Like, it's not like a collection of photographers. That's it. It is him. So, yeah. you know, just, just things to think about. And there isn't really a right answer. It just depends on what you want to be known for. Are you building a brand or are you building a reputation for yourself as an artist? Because personally, I would want a Morgan Murphy original. And if I bought one of the five images that you just showed me, I would want you to sign your name on it. But I would want people to know who that is. Yeah. You know, so if you're not looking to build a business and a brand... Um, necessarily, and you're doing it for you, then you're creating like an artist. I would say stick with your name. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have about 20 minutes. Other questions, concerns, comments? How are you feeling? <laughs> feeling all right. You didn't get me to cry, so that's good. You can like say, There's "Look, I don't make all my apprentices cry." Yeah. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah. There's other. I'm saving one of the higher levels for you when it gets really rough. I figured as much. Um, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head right now. Uh, so, are you uh, are you looking to get more into portraits, or are you pretty happy in the landscape? Because I I'm do we even call those landscapes? What do you call it? Is it I don't know. <laughs> it's beautiful interior and exterior design photography. I did notice when I was picking them, I was like, well, they're all architectural. So is it architectural photography? But it, like the two were kind of interior, and they're all kind of very geometric. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to put that to the group and let them help you define your own genre. Yeah, but I'd like to get more into portraits. Um, I'm actually like I'm a guy of many hats at my work. One of them being media production specialist is my title. So I've been doing more videos, 
like vignette type stuff um, for some of our programs, as well as taking photos of events and staff and stuff like that. And that was one of my more enjoyable days of work in the past like month. Was I had to take you know 60 or so staff photos um, pretty quick. So that was I, I actually enjoyed that interacting, but I noticed like okay, I know the basics of portraits, like you don't want to have them standing in full sun, you want to get them kind of shady, shallowed up the field, make sure they don't have a tree growing out the back of their head uh, when you're outside, all that good stuff. But aside from that, it's like, I, I'd like I, I see a deficiency of like, I don't know how to tell people to pose, I don't know kind of more like the fine-tuned lighting um, things. So like watching the... the I don't know if it was... It was one of your videos where you're talking about, about like the butterfly lighting... I think it was one of the ones Mac posted where you were like five minute Friday and like it's oh, turning like around. Ceiling fan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like that stuff I think it's it's not that I it would necessarily come up in my photography all the time, but like when I get into something I really like to know kind of all aspects of it. So mm-hmm. it, it's something I I see a deficiency and I'm like I I wanna know because I wanna if somebody asks me, Oh like, oh, could you take my portrait? Like I don't want to do a shoddy job. Right. So it's something that like, I, I want to get a little bit, little bit more into, and my mom works at elementary school, so she always knows like all of the parents and all of like the seniors that are you know now graduating. So her friends are always like, "Oh, your son does photography. He's gonna do senior portraits." And I'm like, "I oh, could. Yeah. I'm not that great at portraits, so I don't want to like." But I mean, that's that's something to me. It's like kind of easy side money that I am kind of just missing out on. So. Why don't I do it? Um, well, I don't necessarily think that you should do anything for the money, especially if you're yeah. tapping into something that you really love. But I'm also not opposed to you getting paid to do something that you would do for free. You yeah. know, so if you like going and picking up your camera when you have free time, then I would absolutely be looking for ways to monetize that because that's less that you have to work and more that you have to do. And then. You know, if it grows and it expands organically and it gets to the point where you're making as much or more than you are at your job, then you can decide if that's what you want to do. Um, If I was going to push you in the direction of portraiture, I would actually probably combine the two because you're doing a really beautiful job um, with a lot of the interior and the exterior. You could rock some serious money doing senior portraits and and even uh, family stuff with this kind of high-end, fashionized kind of um, shoot where you could take them to locations like this and shoot them with the background. Like, if you go yeah. through uh, my Google+, Plus, we just did one for a sweet 16 birthday um, with this lovely girl and five of her friends. Her mom paid us to come up, and they rented out the whole penthouse presidential master royal suite, like, whatever was at the very top Um you know, like security guards when you get off the elevator. Um, And it was beautiful in there. And we have, you know, a lot of really beautiful portrait shots that are, you know, close up. But we have some really, really gorgeous, stunning ones that have, like, all of the architecture and the the molding and and furniture and stuff in the background. So I'd be very interested to see what you could create if you kind of combine the two. Yeah. Um, And, you know, on the upside, if you're looking to get more into portraiture, that's where you know, having me as your master helps because that's what I do. So, um, so, in other so words, yeah. me and Sarah are pretty much right at the same spot. Sarah wants to do epic outdoor landscapes and... Yeah, Sarah's, um, Sarah's a little bit more of a tree hugger though because she's like me. So she likes being she likes being out and like my little fellow hippie flower child kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I can see a really beautiful, you know backlit golden hour kind of portraits for her, but I see these yeah. very dramatic, almost um, similar to, uh, are you familiar with Miss Aniella? Uh I've heard of her and looked at a bit of her stuff. Uh, the yeah. giraffe one got me. Yeah, stuff uh, stuff like that. Like, And she takes it to a totally different level of, of this kind and, of artistry, but, um, yeah. but you could do things that have a similar kind of artistic sophistication to them that that would definitely command high-end price tags if you do decide that you want to start paying a little bit more attention to the money. And I think that you're someone that if you're focusing on it for the artistry artistry sake rather than money sake where that's almost secondary, then you can really have some fun, you know, really stretching your creative muscles a little bit and figuring out, like, your own little genre here. But, you know, it's definitely easier to sell photography as a service than a product. So 
when you're shooting portraits or you're shooting for clients where you have someone at the other end going create this for me, that's always easier to build as a business yeah. than just creating the images from the sake of art and hoping somebody loves them enough to buy in a gallery or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well done, Sir Morgan. Are you ready for level five? Indeed I am. All right. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up then, and I will uh, go elevate you to the next level, and then I will see you back here for level nine. All right. Sounds good. All right. Later. Bye.